when most people think about Egypt, they think of the Nile River, the Sphinx, Cleopatra, King Tut, and Ramses the Great, or Ramses II. Well, what about Ramses I, who was his grandfather? Ramses I, or Paramesu, was born to two commoners in the mid-14th century BCE and was the founder of the 19th Egyptian dynasty and the first pharaoh in the Ramessid period. His father was named Seti and his mother was named Sitri. His father was a military commander in northern Egypt and Sitri was the daughter of a military man. This inspired Paramesu to become an Egyptian military troop commander. Pharaoh Horemheb took great interest in Paramesu, which eventually led to Paramesu becoming the second most powerful person in Egypt. After Pharaoh Horemheb died, his successor was his close friend and confidant Paramesu, since the pharaoh had no heir. Paramesu changed his title to Ramses, which means Ra has fashioned him. Unfortunately, his reign was short as it was only a year and four months. He was known in Egypt as the strength of Ra and he who confirms Mat throughout the two lands. One of his goals as pharaoh was to restore the old religion, which will be discussed later. He didn't leave a huge mark on Egypt when he was looked at side by side with other pharaohs, however he did become famous many centuries later. Ramses had a son named Seti, whom he named after his father and served as a vizier and military leader during his father's reign. One of Seti's bigger plans was to take back the lost and forgotten Egyptian belongings that were left in Syria. After Ramses' death, Seti I became the new pharaoh and buried his father in a tomb separate from his mother. Unfortunately for the former king, his tomb would later be raided and the mummy would go missing. The missing mummy of Ramses I would be what really made him famous until it was found in the Niagara Falls Museum in Canada. His body was then moved to Michael C. Carlos Museum in Atlanta, Georgia after closing. Finally, in 2003, the mummy was sent home to Egypt. Ramses reigned in 1292 BCE and will continue to go down in history as a famous Egyptian pharaoh. To understand Egyptian history, we need to have an understanding of the old religion that Ramses and so many other pharaohs before him hoped to restore. Some of the many gods we know of are Anubis, who is believed to take care of the dead and do funerary practices. He was represented with the head of a jackal, since jackals were known to scavenge around cemeteries. He was seen as the principal god of the dead and became the patron god for those who embalmed the dead, and his consort was Anput. Then there's Osiris, who was the god of the underworld, and his consort was Isis. The two of them later created the god Horus, who was depicted with a falcon's head. Horus was the sky god and associated with war and hunting. He was conceived after the death of Osiris, who was killed by his brother Seth. Horus lost his left eye in a fight with Seth, but was then magically healed by the god Thoth. Because his eyes were associated with the sun and moon, the loss and revival of his left eye became the moon cycles. His consort was Hathor. There was also the cat goddess Bastet, who was often described with the head of a cat. Her consort was Ptah. The most famous god is Ra, the god of the sun, and the most powerful of the gods. He had the head of a falcon and controlled every part of the earth, underworld, and the sky. A goddess who is mentioned in Ramses' history was Mat, who was the goddess of truth and justice. Her ostrich feathers represented truth. These gods are important in current day media, such as anime or even video games like the MOBA Smite or even the popular book series American Gods, written by Neil Gaiman, both featuring a host of Egyptian gods and goddesses. These gods were important to Ramses and his successors.
Ramsey's family line features people from history and lore that have influenced many stories and religion, including his son Seti I, Seti's son Ramses the Great, and Ramses the Great's adopted grandson Moses, who is impactful in Christianity and Judaism. More recently, his family line has included characters in cartoons such as Cleo Denial and Nephra Denial from Mattel's Monster High. These are characters who influenced me in my life as well. For example, Cleo Denial was my favorite character from the series and started my obsession with ancient Egyptian culture when I was in kindergarten. I've always enjoyed the fashion, music, and culture of the ancient Egyptians. When I was younger and watching Monster High, Cleo always demanded my attention with her sassy attitude and royal elegance. She was someone I always aspired to be like because she was confident and commanding, but when it came to her friends, she was loyal to the end and a great person to have in your corner. Now that I'm older, I still have the same fascination with ancient Egypt, but for different reasons. The stories of kings murdering their people, and the revolutions those actions caused, the constructs they built, their hieroglyphic language, and the art that is unique to their culture, and the gods themselves, and the stories behind them. I hope that this brief introduction into Egyptian history will inspire others to learn about this intriguing culture. Now, if you'll excuse me, my Cleo doll is demanding that I go tend to her hair.